I'm turning 50 years old next year. And today I want to imagine we're going to go back in time to the 18 year old version of me and give him some advice that will get him results faster and get results for you faster too. My name is Craig Valentine, host of Early to Rise Radio, and let's go back to 1993 when I was studying exercise science at university is what we call it in Canada. I was a bodybuilding, binge drinking, factory working in the summer uh, kind of guy, a Lollapalooza loving, Pearl Jam loving. And, you know, I was a good, smart kid. I did more homework than most people. But there's about three or four lessons that I wish I knew then that I know now that would have set me up for so much more success. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I would still recommend that I went to college. I would do it a little bit different, but I'm not one of those people who say that college is worthless. Because what I went to college for, I wanted to be a strength and conditioning coach in the National Hockey League. And I learned that you needed a master's degree in exercise science in order to, to really be accepted into that position because I looked at all the ones that existed and 90% of them had that designation. Plus they needed a certified strength and conditioning specialist certification, which only went to people at that time who had university degrees. So I would have done university different because of one of the things that I would tell myself, but I still would have went to college. I would have told myself at 18 to stay in college, not drop out and become an entrepreneur because I wasn't ready for it yet, even though eventually that was going to be my path. Now, the first thing that I would do that I would make myself do to that 18 year old is I would say, learn face to face, nose to nose, toes to toes sales. I went through my entire high school job career working at a greenhouse and in a factory. And I never had to sell things to people. In fact, when I worked at the greenhouse and people came up and asked me questions, I would just refer them to somebody else. I really hid behind my introverted label, you know, that I labeled myself the type of person who didn't want to talk to other people about that type of stuff. But if I could go back, you know, I'd get a job as a waiter or some type of door-to-door -door sales because the more you are able to sell, the more girls you would get. That's what I would tell myself. If you're better at sales, you will have more girlfriends. You won't have to get drunk in order to talk to girls. No, you will have the confidence and the persuasion skills to get into more conversations sober so that you were able to be more successful in every area of life. So today, the opportunities are insane. Solar. I know so many young men making hundreds of thousands of dollars selling door-to-door -door solar sales. And there's you know, another, guy, another guy who sells garage door systems, another guy with fire alarms. It's a horribly difficult job. But if you are able to stick with it and master it and become good at face-to-face, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes selling, I mean, you can write your ticket in any area of life. That is probably the number one skill that anybody at any age could learn. And I'm still learning it myself because it allows me to speak from stage and sell. It allows me to persuade you in these videos through the spoken word to do the things that I suggest you to do. And so that is the key. Now, if we were face to face, I'd be able to monitor your reaction to see where you got excited and where you were like, no way, man. So that's why the key of face-to-face -face selling is something that I wish I had done. And I would go back in time and I would pick myself up by the collar and I would say, you got to do it. You got to do it. The second thing I would tell myself to do is to stop drinking. Now, I took up drinking when I was in high school because I grew up in this little farm town where you played hockey and drank beer. You drank beer and then played hockey. It didn't matter which order you did it. That's what you did in my hometown. And then you got, in, you know, sometimes you wouldn't got in a fight and sometimes you kissed a girl. But you didn't need, you didn't need alcohol, Craig. Uh, if you just would have, you know, learned those social skills and the selling and also limited the labeling of yourself as an introvert and instead just looked at having fun without alcohol. And today I haven't drank in over two and a half years. And my friend Pedro Skoulian has given up alcohol. My friend Jason Capital has given up alcohol. My friend Sharon Sarazza never really drank. Lewis Howes was one of the first and most influential people I met who told me they had never had a drop of alcohol. This was in 2009 before he became famous. And I was blown away by the idea that someone could have gone through college as a football player, which is what Lewis did, and not drank alcohol. That was incredible. And I wish that I would have had the courage. I wish I would have had the systems because I know that all of the people I was friends with in university slash college is what we, we call a university in Canada, college in America. I know that all those people would have been my friends and, and remain friendly with me because I had other friends who didn't drink and everybody was friends with that person. And they just had better social skills. 
and, and it sets you up for life when you don't drink. Man, I mean, so many mornings hungover, so many mistakes, so many stupid things I said to people. You know, fortunately, I didn't ruin my life, but I know that I got behind the wheel of the car twice and while I was impaired. And I don't know why, you know, God got me home those two nights, but he did. And I'm so grateful for it. But I wish I was never put in that situation because those are catastrophic mistakes that I was making. And alcohol just really doesn't do anything for you that you can't do on your own. That's what I would tell myself. So learn face-to-face -face sales, which allows you then to not need to drink so much. And then you can stop labeling yourself as an introvert. I have introverted tendencies. I love being alone. I love writing. It, it is naturally difficult for me to go and have a lot of conversations with people. It's naturally difficult for me to even do these YouTube videos, but it's proof that I can do them. And I just need to set up myself up with systems for success so that, you know, when I do them in the afternoon, I have lower energy. So we switch them around. I do them in the morning and I have higher energy now and it's less difficult for me. Everything is a game of systems. And so when you label yourself anything, like if you say, I can never be on time, you will never be on time. If you can say, I can never lose weight, you will always remain overweight. If you say, I'm not good at sales, you will never get rich and you will never be good at sales. So stop labeling yourself. So I would go back and tell myself, I didn't even know the word introvert until my first year of college. This one girl that I was dating said, you're an introvert, aren't you? And I said, I what does that even mean? And she said, you have conversations with yourself in your head, like before you talk to other people. I'm like, well, yeah, it doesn't, like I thought everybody was the same way as I was that really had a lot of conversations in their head and really had a lot of internal dialogue. I mean, I could go days just talking to myself, but no, most people, or you know, a lot of people aren't like that. And I didn't even know that was a thing until she told me that. And then for the rest of my college career, I labeled myself as an introvert. And through my first many years as an entrepreneur, I labeled myself as an introvert. In fact, I, I have, um, I think I've mentioned this in some video before, but on my Marriott hotel profile, you know, you get that as I'm like a platinum member because I spent 80 nights in a Westin in Denver one year. And so I'm like way high up in their loyalty program. But I have a, a note on my profile whenever I go to a Marriott that says low floor, please. And I did that over 15 years ago when I wanted to skip the elevator so I didn't have to talk to people in the elevator. And I would just be able to run up the stairs to my room up two or three floors. And that and that is always a reminder of how I labeled myself. I even labeled myself within the Marriott system and it did not serve me uh, besides giving me a little more exercise running up the stairs. But now I'm happy to be in an elevator and greet people when they come in because I don't label myself that introvert anymore. One more thing that I would force myself to do is I've, if a 50 year old me was able to go back and talk to 18 year old me is I would say take up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. As soon as you hear about it in 1995 at the first UFC, which is around the time, I remember watching it in college and, and we were all dummies. We were all like, this is so boring watching this guy wrestle on the ground. If I would have known how powerful that sport is, I, I wish I would have forced myself to take that up. Again, you have to go and you have to do that with other people. And I was in a phase of my life where I'm bodybuilding. I can go to the gym and, and work out by myself. I don't have to talk to anybody there. In fact, nobody wants to talk to you when you're at the gym, except for you know those people who go to the gym just to talk to people and not work out. But I was one of the people who went to the gym to work out and not talk to people. But if I would have known how interesting jujitsu is, how helpful it is, how challenging it is, how mind expanding it is, I would have done that at age 18 or 20 when it first became popular. Because here, uh, I live in Cancun, Mexico right now, and I started jujitsu last year because one of my neighbors was a black belt and he's from Belgium and he was my age. And when he saw the first UFC, he was like, I have to learn this because he was a black belt in karate. He was really into martial arts. And he spent the next 10 years of his life or 15 years of his life on that jujitsu journey, becoming a black belt. And it's such a powerful skill to have. Um, and it's not a sport you should take up when you're 48 years old because it's too hard on you. So man, if I could have taken it up back then and skipped a few bodybuilding workouts, I'd be a far better person for it. I think that it's just tremendous skill to have. So those are the things that I would tell my 18 year old self, learn face-to-face -face sales, stop drinking. I would stop labeling myself an introvert and I'd take up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And as far ahead as I am in life today, I'd be a lot further ahead if I knew those things back then. Oh, wait, 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 there's one more thing. There's one more thing. Because I was able to quit drinking, I'd be able to cut my expenses. And because I was able to learn sales, I would have increased my income, which then meant I had more money and I would have invested more in myself. So first of all, I would have had to have taken the money that I saved 
from alcohol and invested it in sales skills. But I definitely would have done that and then taken that money and invested it in more sales skills and more entrepreneurship skills and more real estate is another thing that I would have done. I'm very fortunate that I got lucky on a few real estate deals and I'm doing well. But man, if I would have gotten invested in real estate back then, I'd be way further ahead. So cut expenses and invest in yourself is probably the last lesson that I would give myself because I'd be way further ahead. Now, I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I'm grateful for what I've been able to achieve. But these are lessons that should be taken into account at any age. You should learn to sell even if you're 71. You should never label yourself even if you're 65. And you should stop drinking alcohol at every age. Cut it down, eliminate it as much as possible. I don't know about jujitsu, but any martial arts will do. And cut your expenses so you can invest in yourself so you get ahead in life. Those are the things. I'd tell my younger self. This is Craig Valentine from Early to Rise Radio. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you would tell yourself in the comments below.